1-800-273-6502 or visit the wellness coalition.org uh -huh. made possible with funding from the centers for disease control and prevention so once again major major shouts out to the wellness coalition shout them out and we also got to say what's up to our a1s since day one since day one there it is, is the Foundation mm -hmm. again founded by our big sis Tara and Mama Sonya Mills and McCall. The focus of the Loving Teddy Bear Foundation is mental health awareness with a concentration on suicide prevention. This foundation is a tribute to the life and memory of Brother Colin Connor. To learn more about his story and the Loving Teddy Bear Foundation, head over to their website, which is lovingteddybear.com. Again, lovingteddybear.com. And if you would like to make a donation to this awesome and amazing foundation, we invite you to do so via their cash app. Their cash tag is dollar sign loving TB foundation. foundation. That's dollar sign loving TB foundation. foundation. So once again, major, major shouts out to the wellness coalition and the loving teddy bear. Foundation. Yeah. So, man, how your week been going, bro? Week's been good, man. I, uh, if I had to give one word for my week, I would say it's been active. My week has been active. Mm. I think there's been a dull, mo a dull moment or a slow moment or even a silent moment for me this week. I think, is that a good, is that a good thing? I think it's a good thing because okay. I'm seeing a lot of progress. Uh -huh. um, Ministry-wise, a lot of things happening at Restoration that I am super excited about. And of course, we'll be sharing more about that publicly uh, as the days and weeks draw near. Uh, and so I'm grateful for that. And then uh, just on the home front, man, my wife um, had an opportunity. Major shouts out to Mrs. Cheyenne Priceberg. Uh, uh, my wife, Lady A, out to Stewart, had the opportunity to sing last night at the uh, Miss ASU pageant. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I heard she did a phenomenal job, and she just rocked the Akadon, uh last night. So major shouts out to her. And so that plus school, man, and you just, just that. life, as they say, is lifing for me right about now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. I got you. Uh, I got you, man. And, you know, just the life as a pastor, man, you, you never clock out. Your shift is never over. Uh, so just ministering to members, praying for members, being there for members, showing up for members, all that good stuff. So this week has been a very, very active week, and so I can't complain about it because it could be inactive. True. <laughs> so, True. Or active in the wrong direction. Yeah, so it's a blessing, and I, I truly thank God for it. Um, before I ask you, how was your week? I see you have some some new letters across your chest. Yeah, man. Um, uh, great week for me. Busy week for me. I would say eventful. That'd probably be my word. That's good. Um, but but like you said, just a lot going on, grinding, man. Um, it's been a um very very interesting week. Uh, we've lost a few people that were dear to us at our church. Oh wow. Um, Deputy Young, um, Deacon Ferris, um. He was a blessing in our church. We have a few other members that are dealing with some uh, loss in their family. Wow. So wow. That's, it's been interesting, um, you know, handling those moments as well as still making strides. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I last night I crossed over into Phi Mu Alpha Land. Oh! The music fraternity. Uh -oh. um, it's, it's major. It's amazing. I went I went to school in 06 at A&M with the desire to join Phi Mu Alpha. Uh, music fraternity for me and um, just a network of men who are about music okay. and understanding that harmony, even in the music, transcends the harmony among men. Um, so, yeah, awesome, amazing time. Shout out to those young men and the older fellas with me. So, uh, they came through. In case somebody may be wondering, you have not left. No, I'm still in probably the signal for time. Okay. Yeah, this is. Well, you know somebody that see you got new letters. Oh, yeah. like, uh oh, you know, some they, they say you crossed over. They think, oh, you know, stop. <laughs> He's no longer a sigma man. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. no but no. as we talked about yesterday, yeah. um, this was something that you've been wanting to do for forever since '06, man. Long time coming. Wow. Long time coming, man. Uh, so it's it's a beautiful thing that that full circle. The opportunity came for me to be an honorary member of Five Alpha. So. I, I take that with stride and uh, yeah. poke my chest out and wear the letters, man, to help support those young men and <laughs> all that the organization is attempting to do um, 
concerning music in America. Yeah. Um, I think it matters. I think it's big. Uh, so shout out. Thank you for everyone who's wished us congratulations. Um, and I'm even excited tonight. We have a concert at New Home Out Mix. Yeah. Um, Mr. CQ Colors coming through. Uh, that's big, bro. That's like full circle again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's one of those guys we used to watch when we were kids. Like, man. I him yesterday during the interview. I remember from uh, Tribe of Judah, man. Uh-huh. Like, that was a phenomenal choir. Where did he get all this energy from, right? <laughs> How's this guy doing all of this? And so, yeah. Even as a young boy. And I remember telling my mom, like, straight up. I, we was in Lanier. Okay. I think it was Judah Fest is what they called it. Got you. And I'm looking at them on stage. I'm like, Mama, I want to be up there doing that. Right? <laughs> and so, you know, full circle years come. And, you know, CQ, uh, Eric Nettles, Leo Lewis, they got together. I got to sing background with them. Turn around. They give me the mic. And I'm singing on stage with them. Um, so it's just one of those dope moments. I think yeah, the passing of the torch type of uh, ordeal and just a conversation and opportunity to be amongst these yeah. guys who've been yeah. already doing it. Um, so the concert tonight <clears throat> at New Home is free? I, yeah, man. A lot of people have been asking me, is it free? So because people have been asking me, I made a post a little while ago and I said, <laughs> this is a free concert. Did you really have to make a post? Yeah, you're free to worship, you're free to sing, you're free to attend, okay? Free? Uh, yeah, free. Like F-R and the E-E. Right. Just come in. I mean, once we're at capacity, we're at capacity. But if you get there around the six thirty hour, hey, you're gonna be in there. What time it starts? Six thirty. It starts six thirty. Yeah, well let me take that back then. You might want to get here around like five. So doors open at what time? Well, you know, they open. <laughs> yeah, this this ain't the Davis theater. Right? <laughs> this can't give you an hour hour cushion. Half of y'all still at work anyway. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, but but nah, just be there, man. Uh, it starts at 6.30. We do everything on time uh, and we're going to be out of there on time. Hallelujah! Then you had to throw that Hallelujah. in. You got to put that in. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, I just want them to know, you know, some folk have timed out when they show up to folks' <laughs> churches. So they try to I show up. I get about 6.5, 6.50-ish. Let me get there right after the offering. I'm just wrong. It just, if it started 10, if I get there at 10.45, it'd be preaching. Right? That's, they like, oh, really do that. They do time and out. Just, to, time just to mark that thing off. Now, they might want to get there on time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so will anyone else be singing or it's just... Uh, so the the voices of New Home Out Megs, uh, our choir, our mass choir will be singing. Okay. Uh, so I think they're gonna do two songs and then then they turn it over to CQ. Got you. Yeah, he gonna gotcha. he gonna have his wife. CQ and the Peace Troop. CQ color and the Peace Troop. That's that's what's up. Yeah, man, he's major. Yeah, he's you major. Know, we got, they got some music that's supposed to be sent my way soon too. So I'm definitely gonna be interested to hear what that sounds like. Uh, because if I know him, it's gonna be dope. It's gonna be energetic. It's gonna be fresh. And it's gonna be something that's gonna make you run, shout, jump, holler, scream, wallow, whatever you wanna do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's gonna be different um, yeah, because we're used to seeing Q with Tribe of Judah. That was a full blown choir. That was so Peace Troop. From from what I've been told, is about eleven people. From the videos I watched, it's about eleven, twelve people. Wow. So wow. to see him work in that praise team type atmosphere is yeah. gonna be interesting it's as well. It's gonna be good to see. Yeah, and they some monster singers from yeah. what I've been hearing. Okay. What you know, the videos he sent me, I was like, man, God, that's right. That's what's up. Uh, so, yeah, it should be a hot time in the Lord tonight, as the old saints would say. Uh, they're going to worship, praise, clap, and sing. Y'all cry, whatever. Just bring your own Kleenex. Yeah, man. Like, we might run out. We might yeah, run out. <laughs> that's, that's a lot that's happening tonight. Because then you got, uh, what you got, Travail, Alabama? Travail, Alabama is going on. It starts yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're doing prayer. Yeah. yeah, prayer every hour on the hour with a different prayer <laughs> intercessor. Um, and then Saturday, they turn around and they'll be having classes to teach on intercession. Okay. okay. Um, and, and aid people to become better prayer warriors. So yeah. that's major. That's needed, too. That's needed. That, that's going to be good. Excuse me. My bad. I did that you in the mic, then. Yeah, you did. There's yeah, little allergies did. going on right yeah, now. Yeah, you did. Pollen's starting to mess with you. Man, bro. Is it getting at you? Man, bro. <laughs> Can't watch my car enough, man. I promise you. Uh, but no, nah, man, shout out to everybody. We see y'all on Facebook. We see you, Mama McCall. Uh, hug yourself, love yourself. Afternoon to you. We love you. You like this shirt? I like this shirt, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dennis Deloach, what's up, my brother? How you doing? That's our, what, what is what is Dennis? He the AP. He the AP? Yeah, he's the AP. Uh, we, AP, what it do, man? Uh, sister in the building, Daisha. What's up? How are you doing? It's good to see you. Praise 96.5 just logged in. They said, hey. Shouts out to Praise. What's up, Praise? <laughs> 
And we definitely want y'all to just hate us. You're on Facebook. If you're on your phone, if you're listening to the radio, I need you to share this with someone. We're having a good conversation today. We're talking about exercising. We're talking about exercising. Um, I, I want to talk about this. Um, there are some things we need to exercise. Yeah. And uh, as we get closer to that part of our conversation, we definitely want you to know that you need to exercise. Now, we ain't told you what to exercise yet, but we yeah. want you to learn how to exercise. We got a special yeah. guest today. Yeah. Sister Kenesha Brown is coming. And we're excited about all that she can add to this conversation. Yeah. Then we're getting close to a break, maybe? No? Yeah, we got three minutes. Okay, cool. So so I want y'all on Facebook, just tell me, give me one word, one word for your week. I need one word for your week. Uh, we see you, Jalen Martin. How you doing? Happy Friday to you, Sister Ruby Barton. Good afternoon, fam. Uh, the maestro Judge Smith, man. Shout out to you, bro. Major shout out to him. He's getting ordained. He's about to get ordained, man. Yeah. So congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. And we're praying for you, man. I, I hope the whole catechism process has been uh, real good and real smooth. I pray you know all the answers uh, in the name of Jesus. Bring it back to remembrance. Uh, <laughs> Daisha Park, I see you. you. said your week was long. You're going to put it on them. Your week was long. Yep. You're going to put it on them. Please do. Please put it on We're praying for you, Judge. You nah, need it. <laughs> That ordination process is it. You hear me? It ain't no joke, yeah, Doc. You it's want not for the faint of heart. You want all the preachers in the room to just be there and say, Yeah, he knows his stuff now. <laughs> That's what you want. That's what you want. We got you, baby. Now you should have a long week. We're praying you through. You you done made it. Look at yourself. Look yeah. down at yourself. Say, I made it. I made it. That's it. Sister Kalia, uh Tolliver, how you doing? Uh Sister Shalonda K Park, she said interesting. It's been an interesting week. I hope that's interesting in a good way. But even if it's not in a good way, I will tell you this. Uh, you have made it through whatever could have been bad. Uh, so you ought to give God praise for that. It went another way. Absolutely. Bless you and thank you, bro, and say the prayer. Oh, we praying for you, bro. Good afternoon to you, Sister Elizabeth Williams. We pray you're doing well. Uh, I see you. Dennis Lowe says he's sitting in the balcony at King. At King? What is that? <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? Uh, I don't know. He's going to have to tell me more. Oh, he said that was voice to text again. Yeah, you're going to have to correct that. <laughs> oh, he's sitting in the balcony at the church. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about a straight church, no tracer. Uh, you made it. Yeah. I'm living on eight feet to sit in the back of the church. Yeah, no, nah, you need to come up. Come, lean in, child of God. Always going to the back. Coming to the front, AP. The AP coming to the front. Lead in, child of God. <laughs> Sister Ruby Barton said productive. That's a blessing. You had a productive week. Uh, Sister Nay, she said she has a, she had a grateful week. I love it. Uh, shout out to you, Sister Liz Williams said she had a determined week. I love it. Pastor JG is in the building. Shout out. Shout out to Pastor Elect. Once again. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Friendship Missionary Baptist Church in Prattville, Alabama. South, South. Uh, we pray you're doing well. We pray Friendship is doing well. Y'all yeah. had y'all first Sunday this past Sunday. Y'all are walking into your second Sunday together. Yeah. I hope and pray y'all are excited about what God's doing over there, man. That's a blessing. So uh, I think we're getting close now. We're going to go to a break. When we get back, we're going to bring our special guest in. What yeah. you say, Trey? Yeah, we got 30 seconds. Uh, so we're going to do that. Look, I want to ask you a real quick question. Mm -hmm. Very quick. Um, Them 30 seconds gone now, boy. Well, it's going to be a quick question. Okay. A real quick question. Why do you find time to just rest? Oh, so. So. <laughs> we can talk about that one. <laughs> Listen, y'all keep it locked. It's more straight church, no change to come go after the break. <laughs> I see it, Dennis. Dennis said, yeah, I'm at an annual conference right now. So he in the balcony listening to us. Waiting to hear these pastoral appointments. Oh, man, you're at one of those. I wonder how those go. Like, I want to. Are other people able to come into those, Dennis Deloach? I, I would love to sit in the room when they start telling preachers where they're going. <laughs> and I think they have the ability in the Methodist church to say, no, I don't, I don't accept that assignment. That's very interesting. Do, do they have the ability in those meetings to say, I don't accept that assignment? That'd be very interesting to do. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I can only imagine. Could you imagine being in a new home and then they send they send you somewhere else after three years? Well, well Bishop, 
I'm retiring. <laughs> you can't retire, dog. You, you can't make me say. What, what if they reject your retirement? Uh -oh. They renounce your retirement. I'm just gonna sit myself down. <laughs> I think I think I think that's when Methodists become Baptists. <laughs> And new home three years. They say, you know what? It's time for you to go. That's when the method is become that. We're gonna, we're gonna send you down to uh, Saint Augustine. <laughs> <laughs> Long week, still got one more day left, Sister Lawson. We praying for you. God's gonna strengthen you through your Saturday. They're gonna tell you we, what you did at New Home. We need you to go down there and do that at, at Saint Augustine. They do that to people too. <laughs> they do that to people. We too. need you to replicate that down there. You know what I'm gonna say? Yes. You know they say at the end of the choir is, "May the Lord watch." Between me and thee, while we're absent. I'm to get your license, ordination papers, and everything else. You Just can have it. <laughs> you can sure. have it. You. Uh, I see my mama. Hey, mama, how you doing? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, uh. We still got. We still got on the line. Yes. Sir. I know you grew up United Methodist, mom, but I'm just saying what I'm saying. If I was in the Methodist church and they tried to force me, your son, you know I'm crazy, to go to some place that I don't want to go to after I had just been already uh, doing a great work where I was, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. It's time for you to move, man. Yeah, yeah, it's time for y'all. They're going to say it's, it's time to. I, and, and I ain't going to lie. Somebody, probably, somebody else may need you. Appointments are negotiated. Help us. Most times, some people receive appointments, some receive disappointments. Yeah. Man, you probably think you'd be, you'd be disappointed. Well, I just can't imagine. You know, that's one of the things we kind of talk about. Like, even dealing with the disappointment of not getting selected to get a church. In the Baptist process, right? Man. That disappointment can be heavy. Just like if you uproot me and I might be doing a good thing. But you feel like maybe it's time for someone else or something else to be there. And so you send me somewhere else that I don't want to go. That could be disappointing. You got a family. Nah, I think that's when people start just starting churches. <laughs> I need to be quiet for somebody to get me in trouble. Please. Just don't, don't do it. Don't do it. AJ in the midday. What's up, big sis? Uh, Derek Scott, what's up, doc? Good evening to you, man. Pray everything goes well tonight at the concert. We're excited about it. Somebody put me on a song today. It was uh, is it Pastor Pastor? Is it Channing Jackson? Wade Jackson. Wade Jackson. Jackson yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Pastor Pastor Wade Jackson. Um, <laughs> JG JG put the emoji. Okay, he know where I'm going. <laughs> uh, he came by and he put me on that greater. Um, by um. I'd heard it before, but it's been a while since I heard it. L. L. Spencer, Spencer and Testament. Got you, Bishop. Uh, bishop Spencer. Uh, back then, I don't think he was a bishop at that moment. Okay. Uh, his group. I think the name of the track is Greater. Yeah, it was called Statement. Okay. Old. Okay. It's old. You hear the band? The band slick. The voice is slick. <laughs> there it is. L. Spencer Smith and Testament. Uh, uh, please don't get the pass in trouble. Yes, man. I'm done. I'm going to leave it alone. So, Tyler. Uh, man. Trey. What's up, dog? I was down in uh, Easter Sunday. I was down in the 4-5 in Hainville, First Baptist Hainville. Okay. And uh, the pastor's... Bishop, uh, Aaron, Aaron Bishop Aaron McCall. He's up introducing me. And he says, and many of y'all have heard his voice anyway. Y'all know his voice from the great show. Everybody in the church, straight church, no chase. I was <laughs> like, no. Okay. Okay. Did they yank the little chaser flag? No, nah, they didn't do all that. It's a little older, a little more season, a little more season. Oh, they be trying. <laughs> and then, then um, I was just at Old Elam for that uh, Life and Legacy celebration service, the funeral. Okay. And uh, 
One of the deacons came to me before we processed in. He said, Doc, I listen to y'all every Friday, man. Y'all, y'all boy keep it up now. Y'all got something going. And so we want to say thank you to you all. Major thanks. It's because of y'all, we're able to do what we do. Yeah. Um, And we're able to uh just uplift and inspire other people. That's a pride for me. So we're reaching people that so we weren't even intending. To we weren't even intending to, do, to reach. Yeah. Our definitely. original intention when we had the conversation was the young people, our age and younger. Yep. Um, but God has allowed us to be a blessing to so many. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for being you. Now, I need y'all to help me because I see 16 people on here, but I only see two, uh, two uh, the number two next to engagement. Now, either, either StreamYard is acting up or y'all have not liked the Facebook broadcast yet. If not, I need you to like the page. I need you to like the video. Like, like it or hit some hearts. Like, put them hearts down there so other people know that they actually or someone's actually enjoying this. <laughs> uh, so that we can get more people to tune in and be a part of what we got going on. Y'all hit them things. I see a few of them. Y'all doing better. Y'all doing better. I see it. I see it. Hit them things. That way people can engage with us and know that we have something going on. So I believe when we talk about exercising, two of the things we should exercise, mm-hmm. right? We should definitely exercise uh, uh, utilizing our mind, right? Um, that's the, all the intellect that we have within. We should apply it, right? Uh, we should definitely exercise physically mm-hmm. uh, for our body is a temple. Uh, and we should be presenting it in such a way uh, that it's a living sacrifice. Come on, us. Uh, so it's important for us to lift some weights. If not lift no weights, lift your weight. <laughs> uh oh, come in the house. Uh, run, walk, be not weary in well doing. <laughs> for if you wait on the Lord, <laughs> you're not up with wings like eagles. You run. So, so, but. In all seriousness, we should exercise to make sure that our mental faculties, that our physical faculties, are, our faculties are operating in the way that they should. Yeah. But also, family, we know that there's a special day coming this Tuesday. There's a special day coming this Tuesday. We want to talk about all of these spaces of exercising because we believe wholeheartedly that if we exercise one area, we'll, we'll naturally want to exercise the other area. Yeah. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Conversation. My sister is going to come on here. She's going to bless us. Uh, that's in the likes of Sister Kanisha Brown. She's been major in all that she's done in the city of Montgomery to make sure that we have the information that we need so that we always uh, are standing in a posture, in a position of being, uh, 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 I guess, informed concerning how we exercise, right? And so we want to talk about it today. I need you to help me real quick. What are you cooking tonight? I'm interested. What are you cooking tonight? Are, are you cooking tonight? <laughs> are, are you cooking tonight? What are you cooking tonight? Uh, it, it, it's going to be a blessing if you cook some. Now, some of y'all, this is pizza night for you. Uh, this Taco Bell night for you. Hope praise his name. Uh, some of us already know what we buy, right? This is this is gift card night. What are you cooking? What are you eating? That's probably what I should have said. Don't ask them what they're cooking, huh? Probably ask them what they're eating. The what, <laughs> what are you eating tonight, family? How we hit prom season? Prom season is on the way. Prom season. Some people get started early. That's going to be very interesting. It was one thing you remember from your prom. Daisha said nothing. And Jill said, now you know better. <laughs> what do I remember from prom? Yeah, one thing. I remember the location. It was right next to the fountain. The, in that the RFA day. activity center building. Yeah. Oh, I remember one more thing. I almost got a ticket the night of prom. It was the first time I ever driven downtown. <laughs> And I turned on that one way and was driving with confidence. Like you knew you were going right. Oh, yeah. Wrong in the mud. Yeah. You see, you, you got to remember back then, bro. And see, we dating ourselves. Yeah. BTW already had theirs. Wow. So they sure did. They sure did. And they, okay. had live, they had a live band. 
in Liban because Nick Tolver um Nick. was over there. Man, yeah, shout out, to Nick. shout out. Um, we we uh yeah man, we didn't have GPS back then, right? One no one no plug in. Like yeah, uh, so you just like I say activity center. What is that? And you just driving, bro. Then you then you look through the breezeway and you see the fountain, and you see people, so it's like oh it's over there. <laughs> one way, cop me, stop me. My bad. I apologize. <laughs> I'm young. I don't know. <laughs> Please give me grace and mercy. I'm trying to get to this prom. <laughs> right. Uh, what What do you remember? Taking pictures. Taking pictures. Taking How many pictures, pictures you took? A lot of them. Oh, God. <laughs> a lot of them. I don't even handle pictures. I have family from both sides of the house. She actually, like, take pictures. Y'all did all of that. Her, her family members was there. Mm -hmm. Dad take pictures. It was crazy. Yeah, y'all did all of that. Ain't nothing wrong with that, though. Oh, that's that's keeping the memories intact. Yeah, no. Like we took pictures, but it was right in front of ooh in the house, you know. And it wasn't a whole, all oh, your family was, coming. We was in the house, outside the house, Lord. by the car, in the car. Y'all had a photo shoot. <laughs> Y'all had a photo shoot. I think everybody had like the same like black suit, uh -huh. with a different color vest. Mm -hmm. It was nothing like kids now. I think dress for prom. Right. Like it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Got you. Did you do both tie or the or the neck tie? I had a bow tie. Both tie. There's also one of those things for me. I'm not one of the people that go all out. So when I when I came out of high school, I just went to man's warehouse. I had a, <laughs> a regular I old all of them had a regular tuck. Yeah. With the, the the different color vest that whatever match. Yeah, yeah, the the kid around here got prom jacket. Did not Where y'all get these daisies and roses from? Like, what's they got the loafers with the gold? <laughs> Montgomery is the inspiration station for 96.5 FM WMGY. We like to give it to yours through the ground press, Pastor Trey. Uh huh. And your boy, Pastor Lee B. This is Trey Church. No chase. Uh, Where we keep things real. Ah, uh, yeah. Relevant. Ah, uh, yeah. And righteous. So it's uh, 332 here in the capital city. Temperature is set at 73 degrees on the outside. Uh huh. It's a sunny and splendiferous Friday afternoon. And, uh,. Go ahead and introduce our, our special guest. Yeah, we got to get her on here, man, because she has a lot to do today. She is a busy woman of God, and we want to bring uh, this sister on. This is Sister Kanisha Brown. She's making major waves for Delta Sigma Theta, as well as the city of Montgomery, in regards to exercising our right to vote. Mm -hmm. She's doing everything she can to inform us so that we make sure that we utilize our right to do Absolutely. so. Absolutely. Uh, so, Kanisha, you on the line? We're doing great. How are you doing? Things with Jesus. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes, ma'am. It's a blessing to have you. Now, just tell us a little something about you. We love it. I love it. Man. I love it. You're a grinder. Um, I remember when I met you in the James W. Uh, Wright Leadership Development Institute. And uh, you started calling out all the stuff that you were doing. And I was just like, yeah, I'm just I'm just a pastor. <laughs> I'm just a pastor. And well, well, pray, well, praise the Lord, sister. <laughs> But no, man, we we're we're grateful for what you're doing because you're educating the community and you're always in the mix making this happen. So we definitely want to shout you out, give you your roses right through here, yeah, um, and just simply tell you thank you. Yes, ma'am. But I know I know because you're a grinder, you got something going on even now. So can you talk to us because Tuesday is a big day. Um, it's the 16th. It's a day for us to go vote. 
and this this really does matter. Can you talk to us about this? And I don't mean that lightly. I'm not exaggerating. It's really a critical election. Um, if you all have paid attention to the news over the past seven or eight months, this has been a newly created district. That's what we call an opportunity district. And what happened after the census, lines were redrawn. And it came to find out that the lines were very gerrymandered to um, benefit one party over the other. So it took some strong will people um, that was led by Evan Milligan, who was also a native son of Montgomery, that was the lead plaintiff on the case who took it to the Supreme Court to get the lines redrawn. And we now have an opportunity district that encompasses um, the black voter population to be about 48.7%. Mm -hmm. So what that will result in possibly um, that congressional seat being flipped. As of right now, we only have one con one black congressperson um, representing us on the federal level, and that's Congresswoman Terry Sewell. So there could be a very strong opportunity that we can have better re representation going um, into November in the general, but that decision has to be made um, on Tuesday by voting in the primary runoff. And we have two exceptionally gifted people um, running on the Democratic side, as well as some bright people running on the Republican side. Um, <clears throat> on the Republican side, you have Dick Brubaker, who has served um, in the legislature, um, and Caroline Dobson, who is an attorney. And on the Democratic side, you have Anthony Daniels, who serves as the minority leader for the Alabama legislature, um, and actually the first African American male to hold that position. And Shamar Figures, who has um, federal experience and most recently served as the de deputy chief of staff for um, Attorney General Merrick Garland. So candidates with very extensive and impressive resumes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm confident that regardless of the outcome on Tuesday, we will have good representation going um, into November. I love it. I'm so grateful for that information. And I'm sure someone is hearing you and they're saying, well, how can I get more information? You know, how can I lend my ear to hear from these uh, candidates what it is they're going to do for us. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I can say that we did, and we did our first installment on last night, um, our program, Rolling to the Post Voting Initiative, this is an organization that I founded back in 2016 um, that will target marginalized communities to not only get registered to vote, but also have extensive voter education if they're impacted by criminal conviction and get the voting rights support and just be more of an informed voter. Um, what we did last night, we started our first, um, what we call congressional conversation, um, where we had Shamari figures that came to our venue. We also had a live stream to, to sit down and have a conversation. We wanted to hear directly from them without any, um, interruption, without any propaganda or anything. We wanted to hear their vision and platform about why they're running for this district, what they look to do or achieve once they get elected. And it was a very good conversation that happened last night and tonight at six o'clock. We'll have a congressional conversation with um, Leader Daniels, which will be at six o'clock. So if you can't make it in person, we'll have it at venue 901, which is located on South Pole Street. Um, you can like and follow our Facebook page, Rolling to the Polls, mm -hmm. Voting Initiative, and um, watch the live stream. We also have a recorded taping of Shamara Figure from last night as well. Some awesome. So you were telling us, you know, where you come from, the city of Montgomery. You told us that you graduated from Jefferson Davis High School, uh, which is now known as JAG. Um, what, 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 not <laughs> so now you wanted to be known as that. See, but, you, say, JD. but you gave me fits about. No, I didn't give you fits. I was just telling you, you have to embrace the newness. Oh, okay. I, I embrace the fact that it's called JAG. But yeah, no, it's JD. Yeah, when yeah, I was there with Daddy. Yeah, Lee High School. Yeah. Amen. Percy Jr. So, so, <laughs> so, as I was saying, where did this passion come from? Um, I don't want to answer your age over the radio, but I do know that you obviously yeah, have to be a young lady, right? So where did your passion come from uh, when it comes to voting? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can say I'm not one of those ones who is ashamed of my age. I'm 
43. I'll be going into my Obama year 44 in November. Um, but I got my passion for engagement actually from my grandmother and my aunts and uncles. I'm also, even though I was born and raised in Montgomery, I am a Lowndes County. If you're familiar with Lowndes County, you know, that's like in the middle of Selma, Montgomery, Bloody Lowndes, deep rooted history in the civil rights movement. And um, growing up and hearing about my aunt, um, Daisy Jackson, who was a principal in Gordonsville, Marcus area, they were very intensive in terms of registering black teachers to get registered to vote during the time when people got physically hurt and assaulted for just trying to register to vote based on the color of the skin. And when I was six years old or around that age or whatever, I do remember my grandmother just like putting me in the car and like, here, you go through this door and tell that man to go vote for Alvin Holmes. Had no clue who Alvin Holmes was at the time, but, you know, that got me involved in it. And just hearing from it all the time, it wasn't something that I felt like I was forced to do, but I felt like it was in me to do. So I take what I learned and I try to pass that on to other people, not directing them or telling them you need to do this because people die, but also understanding um, the importance of voting and making it relational to why they need to go vote. I think a lot of times we get into being on the defensive mm -hmm. when we come across someone who may say that they don't want to vote or they don't care about voting or they don't care about politics. And what I try to um, let them know is like, you know, you may not care about politics, but politics uh, is going to always involve you, uh, regardless if you choose to vote or not decisions are being made by people who are elected into office. So in order to change that, you do have to, excuse me, you do have to exercise your right to vote. And I think a lot of people have to also get out of their mind that you're not only voting someone in office, that they're not doing something that you feel that they should do as an elected official, you can also vote them out. So it's just making sure that they understand the processes and things that go into yeah. um, electing a person and also researching their candidates making sure they're not telling you or selling you whoop tickets, as the as old folks used to say, <laughs> to get elected. And once they get elected, they don't come around anymore. I think you have to pay attention to that and hold them accountable once they're in office as well. Absolutely. Ms. Kanisha, this is Pastor Trey here. And uh, I want to ask you, what are some of the things that we can do to educate the young electorate? Like, how can we get our young people more involved in the political process and with voting and do so in a way that doesn't pressure them or cause them to feel like they're pressured or forced to do something, but, you know, create an environment that will, um, you know, kind of give them the freedom to, you know, express their concerns and then prompt them to do something about it. They will be to listen to them. Um, a lot of time in having conversations with younger people, they do feel like they're not listened to and that their thoughts not be as hard to you. So opening up the conversation, not in a defensive approach, but listening to what their concerns and issues are. And I think a lot of times, generally speaking, a lot of people have the belief that young people don't vote. Um, when you look at numbers and statistics and things like that, it's just not young people that vote. It's people that are my age, some that are older, that are also not older, but people look at the young voters and be like, they're the one of them that are most engaged. But they are very much so engaged. It's just more so understanding what their needs are and how to make sure it translates into exercising their rights. Um, case in point, like I mentioned, I'm 43 years old. My idea of concern may not match. A 23 or 22 year old, but it's also understanding with them what they're concerned about, who in elected office can achieve what they're concerned about, and make what they're concerned about, and then making sure they get involved to go vote. So it's basically like listening to them, making sure that they have a seat at the table where these discussions are being made, and making sure that they understand that they have a place and in involvement in the process. I think that's awesome. It's real good. Um, I, I, you know, I would love to hear some of the positives. Um, to be honest, we hear all of the negatives. You know, why people aren't voting, how many aren't voting. With all of the work that you've been doing, what are some of the positives that you can highlight? 
a good bright spot. And um, I'm not going to call his name because he does volunteer with us from time to time and he may not want all his business out. But um, it was one time we were canvassing in the neighborhood, um, going door to door to make sure people were registered to be canvassed. This gentleman who was about late 50s, early 60s, and asking him was he registered to vote. Um, and normally we look at people who are older and they are already registered. So told us that he wasn't and that he couldn't vote and kind of find out um, he couldn't vote because of an old drug conviction. Mm. Well, with the recent, well, not recent, it happened in 2017 when a more alternative law went into play, a lot of those felony convictions rolled off to where either, depending on what the crime was, they can get registered to vote or complete what they call a third application, which is a certificate of eligibility or right to vote. And they have to have certain criteria in order to get the application process. But once we looked at his information, he didn't have a drug trafficking charge, which is the only one that is eligible for a third application. He had a felony drug conviction, but it wasn't in the criteria where he had to do application, meaning only he just needed to register to vote. So when we told him, well, you can just register to vote. That was like telling him, you know, like telling a five-year-old that Santa Claus was real. So he filled out the application. I gave him my contact number so he can stay in touch. Um, mailed off. Maybe two or three weeks later, he reached out to me saying he registered. He got his voting card. And this was during the 2019 municipal election. So from that point, he just constantly stayed in touch with us. He'll send updates, you know, asking questions. What time is polling location open? Where is this the correct polling location? They're not going to change anything for election day. And, you know, giving him information. And first of all, okay, he just texted me and fine. So the day of that election, keep in mind, polls open at like 7 o'clock in the morning. So maybe like 6.30 or something, he texts me saying, hey, I'm about to get ready to go vote. <laughs> it's like, you know, we get ready to uh, prepare to give people rides to the polls. And maybe about 7.05, 7.10, he texts me in. All right, I'm pulling up. I'm about to get in line. <laughs> so he was giving me a blow by blow of everything. He was doing, all right, I'm about to go in. I got my license and everything. I've chosen my license. So about 15 minutes went by. I was like, okay, he did this stuff. I ain't going to hear from him anymore. Um, so he left out, told me he voted. He was excited. This is the first time he has voted. Uh, keep in mind, I'm saying this is a late 50, early 60 year old man. Right. And that day, it was ruled that uh, Steve Marie, who became first black mayor of Montgomery, had won the election. And that man was so emotional because the first vote that he cast it was to pretty much make history and elect him the first black man in Montgomery. And from that point, even though that's one person, he's been a very good messenger in talking to other people who have been impacted by felonies to get their voting rights restored. And he's been helping us in that way. And now he's been voting in every single election just because we said and had a conversation with him and was patient with him about his right to vote. So that's one success story I can I can say for sure. No, I think that's an amazing. That's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, that's phenomenal. That's, that's phenomenal. Yeah, that, that's an amazing one. I, I remember um, my first voting election. Yeah. Um, graduating from high school in 06, I think I was 17. So our first election was when uh, President Obama was elected as uh, the president. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was crazy because I remember I remember that night like it was nothing when they said it and we watched the speech and then Young Jeezy was playing on every speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody playing Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, but it was you know, and I can re and I, I can remember that moment where I was proud. So I can only imagine how it was for someone who. But to have your voting rights restored. Yeah, bro. Yeah, that that has to be major. Like that's that's that that feeling has to be undeniably a mass. You know, just huge. Right, and then you have to think about it like. He was, you know, he, he made a mistake in the past. Um, but since that time, he's been pretty much a standard citizen. I think he was, um, I can't remember if he was involved in his church or, or deacon in his church. I can't remember. But he was, you know, 
living on the up and up. He never reverted back, you know, to trauma or anything. In all those years, he never knew that he can get his voting rights before. And all he had to do was just fill out a, a voter registration form. So imagine getting that out to other people who just really want to do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Once you just have a conversation with them, that's a lot of people. If you just smile and have a conversation with them, you know, they're open to anything that you say. So, you know, that was just impactful within the stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, now tell me this. Do you have, um, because I know you're a well-informed uh, a young lady, do you have any of the data of what the percentages might have been of the voting uh, turnout uh, for the last uh, voting day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were looking at like this is really now this congressional district is really now a race that boils down to turnout. So if you have a good viable candidate that people can rally behind, then this can be a very flippable seat. Now in Montgomery, um, I know it's going to sound crazy, but turnout was actually higher um, than compared to previous years. Wow. But the turnout was probably roughly around 32, 32 percent. That sounds low, but in a primary election, that's pretty, pretty standard, pretty high. Of course, we want to see higher numbers than that, but normally in primaries, it doesn't really register that high, but we're hoping to have a real big turnout uh, in November. So one thing I do tell people all the time, Alabama specifically does not have a voter registration for, uh, problem. We're probably at 92.8% of registered people um, who are eligible to vote. We're good at voter registration. What it is is a, a, a voter mobilization and voter turnout. We're getting people out to the polls. And we just have to do a better job of reminding people how important it is to get there and also making sure they have the means to get there to vote as well, as well as having easier options to vote like the other states have. <clears throat> early voting and same-day registration, which would benefit Alabama. So we have to work on those things as well. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Yeah, now that's good news. I mean, that the numbers were up, and we all know that all numbers could be better. Uh, but that's a good thing that, that the people turned out to the polls uh, this last election. It's our prayer uh, that we turn out in big numbers this Tuesday as well. Yeah. Um, as you said, this is a critical, this is a crucial, this is a pivotal uh, election concerning that. Uh, congressional that congressional seat. Now we we know we got to get you out of here because you got to go, uh, and we're gonna shift to uh, commercial and some other things. But I wanted you to do this for me. Can you give them a quick one minute spiel? Tell them what they need to do on Tuesday. Okay. Look, what's your name? It's Tuesday. Polls are open from seven a.m. to seven p.m. If you need a ride to get to the polls, we do offer transportation. To get where you need to go, we'll pick you up, wait for you to vote, and we'll take you back home. If you need a ride, please call 334 223 4983. I'll repeat that number 334 223 4983. Please, if you're uncertain of who you're voting for on Tuesday, take time to research your candidates. If you're on social media, visit our Facebook page, Voting for the Polls Voting Initiative, and look at those congressional conversations. I tell people it's important to research your candidates factually. Um, sometimes you have to move above the propaganda, the bullying and stuff like that. So sometimes those kind of result in untruth. So it's always good to hear directly from the candidates, go to their website pages, go to their social media pages, identify what their issues are and things like that, and look at their track record. Um, that should make you have a better informed decision to go vote. But please, go vote. We'll pick you up if we need to. It's all good. But that number, once again, was it, what's the number again? Is it 233-4983? 233-4983. 233-4983. 
Okay, got you. Two, two, three, four, nine, eight, three. Got you. Got you. Well, thank you, sis. We're so grateful you called in to talk to us. We hope and pray that the event tonight is going to be a major success so that people can get the truth. Uh, they can get the raw. They can get the information that they need so they can proceed to get to the polls. Look at you. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was rapping and rhyming. Thank you so much, Kanisha Brown. <laughs> Have a good one. Yes, ma'am, we most, will. Most definitely. Most definitely. All right, bye-bye. Listen, before we go to the commercial break, we have to take the time to shout out Pastor Terry Nelson, listening all the way from the big grand city of Cal Los Angeles. Is that in California? California, yes. California uh -huh. knows how to party. Uh -huh. California uh -huh. know how to party. Uh -huh. In the city. In the city at the church, <laughs> in the city, <laughs> in the church house, that's where they party, yeah. that's where they party, <laughs> where they party. We gotta do a commercial break, man. We gotta do a commercial break. But major shouts out uh, to Pastor Terry Nelson uh, and the Holy Mount Zion Church family. Yeah. In uh, Los Angeles, California. I can't wait to go back there. Man, you have fun. Oh, I can't wait. I'll be there soon. <laughs> Y'all keep it locked. We have more straight church. Don't change the coming go after the break. Peace. Now, that's good information. She said she can help you get to the polls and back home. That's a blessing. 334-223-4983. That's major. Somebody... Somebody gonna need that help. Yeah. Somebody gonna need that help. I think it's gonna be a blessing for somebody uh, to 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 call that number so that you can make sure that you get there. Uh, yeah, voting matters, man. It uh, it affects us in ways that we don't even imagine sometimes, and not just on a national scale, but locally. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? We gotta get more involved in our local elections because they really affect our everyday day-to-day -day lives. Legislation matters, It though. does, man. It um, does. And like she said, you're not just voting to put people in position because they're not doing what you put them in there to do. Get them on the out of there. Get up out of here. Get up, get up, <laughs> get up. Get up out of them seats. <laughs> lifetime appointment. <laughs> now, nah, man, so... Uh, Would you ever run? Four? Would you ever run for uh, an elected office? No. You would? Nah. The Lord called me to preach. Post, post pastor. Because you've already made it abundantly clear you're not you're not dying in the bullfish. You don't made that. I clear. surely won't. You don't made that clear. Uh, post my pastor, would I run for an elected yeah. office? Like we know, once you're in ministry, you never quit ministry. I'm gonna tell you this. I don't put caps on God, nor do I put put myself in boxes. Okay. I don't know what God has in store. So I don't want to speak now and and say no to something that he might put on my heart. Got you. You know, my, my real plan is to retire from pastoring uh, at an age that I can still feel my knees walk and have a straight back and be able to chillax. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. my prayer. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if it comes to pass, it sure will be a blessing. <laughs> um. But you know, there's some things that we uh we desire that never manifest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm not sure, but we're gonna see. Is that something that you would be open to? To be honest, man, I I came across a journal um when I was uh probably like in junior high, maybe maybe junior high, like seventh grade, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I wrote in there was that I wanted to be the governor of Alabama. Right, and um, <laughs> why are you looking like the that? Governor. You said the governor, y'all hear me? And um, um, wow. oh, like my granddad, uh, Mark Gilmore, Council uh, Mark Gilmore, was city councilman over twenty some years. So, like, growing up in a politically involved family, yeah, man, I might, I don't know, I, I might be a politician. I don't know. Probably not. I think I just settle for being a, a uh, community activist. You know, just I think you can get more done sometimes when you just 
involved in the community. Um, but who knows? You just never know. I don't think I would ever be a politician uh, and a pastor. I don't think I'd ever get into politics as far as that is concerned. But, you know, post pastorate, who knows? Who knows? Just never know. <laughs> Hey, did you get it? Okay. All right. So, everybody, what, what's going on again? If you didn't do it, you just got on. Tell us, how was your week? How has your week been? Has it been exciting? Has it been encouraging? I think Daisha earlier said it was long. How has, how has your week been? What you been up to? And not only that, but what you got planned for the weekend? What are you all doing this week? It's a lot going on in the city. So many churches are having events and concerts and services and things of that sort. So tell us, if you haven't done so, how has your week been? And also tell us, what you doing this weekend? What you got playing this weekend, Doc? Doc, um, I was about to say what my my little sister used to say. My older sister used to say, "I'm gonna stay." <laughs> but now this weekend is gonna be an interesting weekend. Um, my hope and prayer is to find uh some rest. That's what we were. You asked the question. How do you find? How do I find rest? How do you find time? Uh, rest? the truth is, not go to sleep, but rest. Well, it's something that I learned. You you know how you have a busy, busy week, but you feel fulfilled? Mm. So I have been one of those type of people that work until till my big break, if okay. that makes sense. You know how some people just get through the week so they can get to the weekend? Yeah. I get through until my next little vacation. Gotcha. Um, and so rest is a mental thing for me mm. uh, where I take breaks, like go golfing. Uh, right? It's like a mental vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. How, how do you how do you find rest? Oh, <laughs> I'm still trying to find it. To be honest, still trying to find it. But everybody, tell us, man, how was your week, man? If you haven't done so, how was your week? Tell us what's going on with you this weekend. Do you have plans? Are you traveling anywhere? Going anywhere? Doing anything? What do you got planned for the weekend? Uh, 398-8791. Correct. Well, we had someone else already on the call block. Yeah, and five minutes she can call. If she want to call now, she can call and we'll have her on hold until we get back from the break. Now, what is her name again for me? Can you text that to me so I don't spell it wrong? Hey. Oh, Alexander. Alexandria Stevens. ST. All right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. It's on busy, Doc. It shouldn't be. It's all enough. Yeah. There it is. We got it. All right. We got it. All right. That's been great. All right, family. So, we're getting ready. We're, we're talking about exercising our right to vote. So, we're, we're definitely making sure that you have all the information that you need so that you can exercise your right to vote this Tuesday. So, we're talking about finding rest. What did you say you do? Still trying to find it. You're still trying to find it. If <laughs> it's lost and you're looking for it. I'm still uh, trying. To, or maybe it's found and I'm just lost on my way to get it. <laughs> but for me, man, rest for me is um uh, when I have moments of stillness, moments of when it's quiet. Mm -hmm. I think that's rest. Uh, okay. when I'm able to just press pause mm -hmm. and uh just chill. 
You know what I'm saying? Not have to do anything, not really have to think about anything. Yeah. Not being asked to do anything, but just chilling. I like it. I like it. I think I think that matters. Right? Because when you're creative, even when you're not physically going, mentally, you're still going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, you're still thinking as a pastor, as a businessman, your mind is still going to the next thing. You're planning, thinking through things, mm-hmm. stuff that you were supposed to do. And you didn't do it hit you in the moment where you probably be like, ah, oh, mm-hmm. I gotta do boom, 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 boom. So um rest is something for me that comes about in moments of stillness, quietness, and uh, moments when I'm just relaxing. I like it. That's that's golf for me. The master's on right now. <laughs> so you play two two tug on the line. You wanna talk to the people. Oh, hey man. Montgomery, this is your boy Sam Coach. I'm so excited. What happened? Um, I know you play golf, but you actually watch it too. Yes. Who's your favorite golf? Um, of course, Tiger. Are you trying to? No, <laughs> I can't do it. Are you a competitive golfer? I, I am. I am. So this it ain't just for fun for you. Or uh, the competitiveness is what makes it fun. Yes. You got the MJ syndrome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, you got the MJ syndrome. But but also also. And and the crazy thing is it's competitive, but I actually know who, who I'm competing with. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. So so most would believe that they're competing against the persons that are on the green with them. Mm-hmm. You're really competing with the atmosphere. You're competing with the dirt. You're competing. Nature. Yeah, you are competing with the course. You know what I mean? <laughs> Brandon Smith, what's up, bro? We praying for you and Sister Monique Smith. Um, that's uh, Brandon Smith is the father of Deputy Young. Uh, Brandon Smith and Monique Smith, father of Deputy Young. Uh, so we're praying for you all in this season, in this in this moment. Yeah. Um. But so so yeah, you're praying, you're playing against all of that, and that could change at the drop of the hat. We in Montgomery, so the warmer it is, the ball will roll far. The colder it is, the ball is like a brick and it won't keep rolling. Right, um, all of that stuff matters. They even set up the courses to mess you up. Mm. Like the course will go this way. I'll do this so y'all can see me. Say the course is coming straight at you. Well, the tee box is gonna be slanted to the side because they almost want you to hit the wrong way. So now you gotta make sure you reposition yourself to go straight. Like it's all up here. It's a mental act. It's a mental. Yeah, and then you start playing with folks that's competitive. Now they want to talk to you too. <laughs> So you got to drown them out and read the course right. Uh oh. Just so you can win. So what is what? What's the life lesson? Uh, the life lesson is that you can't listen to everything around you. Life lesson is that you got to focus on what you're doing and where you want it to go. Mm. So yeah. <laughs> I knew it was a lesson. So oh, it's a lesson. I know. I know. Golf is a beast, man. Uh, golf, golf is a beast. It, even even with uh, how you handle your clubs, mm. right? Like the placement of your clubs has everything to do with where the ball is going. But the main important thing about where the ball is going is how you grip the club. You can't grip too tight. You can't grip too loose. Yeah. You got to grip, grip it just right. Wow. Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting. But that's a game of golf. Absolutely love it. Absolutely. Not. Ten years ago, did you think you'd be into golf? No, but if someone would have told me what I know now, you would have, I would have been into golf. Like we weren't exposed to that, right? And although my dad had clubs, he was no longer golfing, so I didn't see him going out there. It looked like something that was a thing of the past time that he did when he was a businessman of sorts. Yeah, it didn't look like something he just carried on. But it's like seventy and eighty year old golfers. Yeah, you don't see seven to eighty year old basketball players. My granddad was. For real? See, I think it matters. 
You don't see basketball players at all. You don't see football players at all. No, but you see a lot of them transition to golf, though. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Because of the game of the mind. It ain't about how hard you can hit it. Yeah. It's about how straight you can hit it. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. And that's the thing I had to learn. <laughs> it's a game of meekness. <laughs> Montgomery's an inspiration station for 96.5 FM WMGY. We're now 10 minutes past the 4 o'clock hours, 14 here in the capital city. You hang with yours, truly the crown prince, Pastor Trey. And your boy, Pastor Libby. This is Straight Church. No chaser. Where we keep things real, uh -huh. relevant, uh -huh. and righteous. All right, man. So, we have another special guest on the line with us. Go yeah. Ahead and do the introduction. Hey man, what a blessing it is. We are here again and we're excited because we have another guest as we continue to talk about exercise and we've talked about uh exercising your right to vote and we have another uh, sister that is here to help us. It is Sister Alexandria Stevens. Let's welcome her to Straight Church No Chaser. Yes. Y'all put your hands together. Put them hearts on Facebook as she comes to talk to us more about exercising our right to vote. Are you there? I am here. How are you all? We're doing great. How are you awesome. doing? Yes. So you got some information you want to share with us uh, just to give us more information about what's coming up on uh, Tuesday. Yes. Yeah, so Tuesday, Montgomery County, there is a runoff into Westmore District 2. So we're encouraging people to go back out and vote. And even if you did not vote March the 5th, in the primary, you can still vote in the primary runoff. So don't let that deter you because you did not vote March the 5th. You can still go out and vote next Tuesday on April the 16th. Awesome and amazing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now, oftentimes people uh, have their own notions and uh, feel certain ways about why they shouldn't do and what they should do. What can you inform us? Is there anything else on this ballot? Um, for Montgomery County, no, those are the, that's the only thing that's on the ballot. There is a runoff in both political parties. So there's a runoff um, in the Democratic Party between Anthony Daniels and Samari Figure. And for the Republican ballot, it's Carolyn Dobson and Dick Brubaker. So that's the only race on each one of the ballots for this election, but we want to keep people tuned in for the November 6th election later on this year, which will be everybody in all of the races. Awesome. So I'm a pastor, I'm a local pastor here, and uh, I always try to hear the questions of the people who are sitting in the back of the congregation. And I just heard someone ask the question, how do I know where I'm supposed to vote? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. So there are several ways for people to find that information. One, the easiest way, um, I think, they can simply go to the website, which is MontgomeryVoteAL.gov to loco locate their polling place. And I'll repeat that. That's MontgomeryVote with an S, AL.gov. That's one way. Now, we also have a question service through the Montgomery County Election Center that voters can use. So the only thing they would need to do is text the word polling location mm -hmm. to 334-625-1763. Again, that's polling location to the number 334-625-1763. And what that'll do is send them a link back. All they need to do is put their information in and it will tell them exactly where they where they vote. And it will also give them the districts that they are in. Now, one last way that people can find that information out, they can contact the local board registrar. Um, that number is 334-832-1215. Again, 832-1215. And someone in the board registrar will be able to look them up and give them that information. So there's no reason no voters should not be aware of where they are supposed to vote on election day. This is Pastor Trey here. How are you? Good. 
I'm doing good. I uh, want to know, could you explain to our listening audience what is so important about this election? I read something the other day that said, you know, this is kind of like the the playoffs. So, you know, you, you won the first round. You need to go back out and make sure your candidate wins the overall game. So I encourage people to go back out. I always say um, with the runoff, people don't show back up, but your candidate is counting on you. So we are hoping for a higher turnout than we usually see in a runoff election. Now, for those who didn't vote in the primary, and you may be interested in voting uh, this upcoming Tuesday, how can they learn more about the candidates? The information out there. <laughs> on, on the website, um, you know, we here at the election center, we typically try to stay out of that part. You know, we work more so on the administrative side, letting people know how they can exercise their right to vote. Um, so I know a lot of, most of the candidates, they have Facebook pages, you know, you can Google them, find information out about them online. Um, that's usually, that's typically what I do as a voter myself, because we don't, you know, like I said, we don't harvest that information here, because we have to stay neutral, so we don't get involved in the this or that. Yeah. I'm glad you said Google it because sometimes when we tell people to Google stuff, they look at us like we're we're crazy, like we just said a bad word. So I'm glad you told them it's okay to Google <laughs> the candidate if they don't know or if they want to know more about you. So thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Now, now we're on the uh, we're on Facebook right now, and uh, Sister Kiwi Ray Hayes just jumped in. She said, "Thank you, Judge Love, for making it possible for high school students to work at the polls. They had to sign up at their high school and the county election center." Uh, she said, we appreciate you, Miss Alexandria. Now, I wasn't even aware about that. So so high school students have the opportunity to work at the polls now. Yes, um, that is something that the state did um, a, few, a couple of years ago. I, mean, I was gone for a few years, and then I came back to Alabama. Um, but yes, if you're 16, 17, 18, if you're in high school, there is a student poll worker intern application, which you can find on our website or the Secretary of State's website, and the student can fill it out, and they just need to have their principal or an administrator approve um, them to work, and it'll be an excused absence. So, yes, we get a, quite a few more. Um, I'm seeing more and more students um, participate, and the feedback that we're getting is awesome. They love it. They love being right there in the middle, in the thick of it on election day. Awesome. Now, tell me one more thing, because just a few uh, at the last election, uh, I, I went into the poll and, and you, you can slap my wrist for this. I went into the polls to vote and I did not have my current ID. I had an old ID with an old address and they took me through signing some papers and some other things. Are those processes uh, still going to be happening at this election? So let me answer let me answer it this way. So you do need a valid photo ID. You can use your driver's license or you can use a non-driver's ID as long as it's not expired no more than 60 days. Now, we don't look at your address, but you do have to verify that the information that's in the voter registration system is correct. So when you go to the polling place on election day, and they turn the screen around and you know you verify your information on that screen you're signing saying that yes this information is true and correct however if you have moved yes you can fill out an update form to your correct address yes that will still be happening that will always happen at the polling places you can complete an update form um if you have moved and you're in a different district you will be sent to your new polling place, but if you you move and you're still within the same district, you're saying you're still within the same um, voting precinct, then you'll still be able to vote at that precinct on election day. Awesome! Thank you so much for that information. Yes, now, sir. we know you got plenty of things to do, um, and we want to definitely give you the opportunity to just give us one more big spiel of what we should be doing on Tuesday and why we should be doing it. 
All right, again, there is a runoff in Congressional District 2 on next Tuesday. So please, please, please make sure you go out and exercise your right to vote. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you did not vote on March the 5th, you can still vote April the 16th. It does not matter. We encourage you to go out and vote. And if you run into an issue on election day, I like to tell people, give us a call, please, before you cast your ballot. That way we can get any issues that you are having or may have or may come across resolved so you can securely and confidently cast your ballot. Awesome. That's awesome. Look at you. <laughs> Thank you so much, yes. Sister Alexandria Stevens, for all that you do, all of the work that you've been putting in. I uh, was grateful for you tuning in, jumping in to Straight Church No Chaser, just to give our audience a little more information. For sure. Yes, oh, man. yes. We're definitely going to bring that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you have a good rest of your day. All right. Yeah, Fam man, 421. Family, um, it's getting close to break time today. Um, we're going to find ourselves up out here yeah. uh, because we got a few things to do today. This is a very busy weekend. It's my prayer that you're going to be busy doing something productive and positive. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, if you don't have anything to do or you're trying to find something to do, listen, you can go by new home mount Bay. you can come through this evening at 6 30 6 30 there's a free f-r-e-e -E. concert concert all they want you to do is show up show yourself come ready to shout worship come ready to sing to be in expectation to dance of a mighty move of god to love on the lord <laughs> Yeah, you can show up the new home out Megs tonight, <laughs> this evening at six thirty p.m. Sin Cube Color. Somewhere I heard in the Peach Street. There's a song that said, "Tonight is the night uh -oh. we go to worship." <laughs> you, get made over. you can get <laughs> make me over again. That's a song. <laughs> yeah, no. <I'm>... <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 da, da. And then Tony. Yes. yes, sir. Come and on then, through. Uh, and then you can also uh, catch up with Apostle Jared Pace and uh, Bishop Jackson and those at Greater Church. Yes, sir. Night Travail, yes. Alabama. Absolutely. They're having five hours of prayer tonight, intercessory prayer, uh, and they just have a phenomenal, phenomenal lineup tonight. And uh, so if you need prayer, yeah. uh, if you need someone to intercede for you, uh, they will have intercessors on standby. I'm telling you, amazing things happen when you tap into the power of prayer. It's the effectual, fervent prayer. My Lord, my Lord. It fails much. And so you can stop by Greater Church tonight. Woo! And uh, I'm Yellow. pretty sure that they will be willing and able to pray for you, uh -huh. pray for your family, to pray for your children, to pray for your finances, to pray for your business, whatever it is you may need prayer about. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. You got some people who are willing to touch and agree with you. Puss and pray not. about. Yeah, man. So, yeah. There it is. Those are two things we know for sure that are happening tonight. We're getting out of here. We got to get ready to go. But we thank y'all. Talk on the walls. Yeah. You. See you later. For tuning in tonight. Alligator. Ah. After a while. We got to go. Crocodile. We'll see ya. It's been fun. When we see ya. We got to get out of here. That's it. Now unto him Come who is able. You got this for real. Yeah. <laughs> you can't to do exceeding <laughs> and abundantly. You can't help it. Abundant. And once again, man, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you, Doc. Find me out for Music Fraternity, Men of Music. And man, I had a great night last night, but I'm going to have a great night tonight. Yes. We're going to worship. We're going to praise. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, on Sunday morning. Yeah, Sunday morning is coming. Sunday morning. Sunday morning is coming. You gotta get wild, my man. Ooh. What voice is that? My wife gone. <laughs> I ain't got my man. But, but now nah, we we out of here, family. Straight yeah. church, no Chesser. Chase, Chaser. Come on now, not not Chesser. I said Chesser. Yeah, yeah it's not Chesser. Chaser. The boy asleep at Chaser. Straight church, no chaser. Listen, Sunday's coming. If you don't have a church to attend, I want to invite you to Restoration Church. Get over there. This Sunday, 
9.30 a.m., 164 East South Boulevard between South Court Street and Norman Bridge Road. Uh, 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 we uh, would love for you to worship with us. I'm telling you, yeah, you yeah. being there would be such a special, special, special surprise for us. We will see you there. Get over there. Get over to Restoration. <laughs> Talks at what time you said? 9.30. 9.30. Yes, sir. Worship will be great. Start on time. Make sure you get to worship. Make yeah, sure you worship the Lord. Absolutely. Uh, in spirit and in truth. Yeah. We out of here, family. We got to get on. See y'all later. Peace. Peace. Peace.